This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. It's time for the JJO Morning Show 646 Fix. Talk dirty to me, please. Sex Fix is brought to you by Beach House Lashes. Book your appointment at beachhouselashes.com. That's the very, very dead Richie Valens honoring the one and only Donna on line two. The, the, where all the trouble starts. Your favorite line. Line two. Or line three's for lovers. Line two's for jilted lovers. Hello, Donna. What's line going on? Line two's for sluts. What's going on, hey. you, little, you little slut? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I qualify as jilted lover, but I think it's close, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll be the judge of this. All right. So here's what I've got going on, guys. Um, For like a year and a half, I've been banging my boss. <laughs> oh, no. you, we're, we're rubbing off on these people, I can tell right now. You used to be nice and calm and listen to this. They used stuff. to be decent people. They used to be decent church God fearing people. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> more. So, where I'm at is like in the last, I don't know, half of a year, about six months. It's kind of developed into a little bit more. Okay. And he keeps saying he's going to leave his wife, but he won't. He's not making any moves. And I just don't think he's going. I think he's stringing me along. Uh. And what I really want is suggestions on how to get him to leave his wife. Uh, I know. Does he (laughs) have kids? me. That would be great. All right. Are there kids involved? Um, no. Okay, well, that's good. But Thank they God. talk about trying. He does They don't have any kids. He gets, he gets the both of... I've seen this in so many movies. This is so bad. Uh, I remember yeah. the movie with Michael Douglas where they cooked the rabbit. Fatal Attraction. Oh, dude. Oh. Dude, yes. <laughs> and why the hell would you leave Ann Archer, who is smoking hot, dude? Because guys are stupid. They want playthings. Working <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And, so, uh, I'm the plaything? What does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, you're the plaything. Yeah. I mean, clearly. Sorry, okay. Donna. Okay. Oh, Donna. How do I get him to make me more than the plaything? <laughs> that's not. <clears throat> I hate to be the asshole here. Well, I guess, you know what? I am not the asshole. You get he, paid. he is the asshole. He's never going to leave his wife. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. My my life is so stressful. I got a woman I'm sleeping with, it and it helps. It's not going to happen. No, they 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 no. He's a dick. Yes, he's a dick. Yes, and you can't you can't tell the wife. Can she tell the wife? No, that's where that's the movie. Because yeah, I've considered that. That's definitely crossed the mind a few times. Oh, this is a mess. Although with no kids to pay child support, it might be it might be helpful. But you are the uh, uh, distraction. I'm trying to not make you feel, you know, used, but I'm sorry, but you, you're being used. He's an asshole. You don't want to be with him anyway. I guarantee you don't. The guy that cheats on his own wife, right? Although. He's what, not who he's pretending to be. How about that? Do you think you're the only one? Or do you think there are others? <laughs> oh. I mean, I thought I was the only one till you said that. Now I'm worried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm the only one at work for sure. But now I wonder, does he have more? That's the old thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, dude, there's an old Van Halen uh-huh. song called Best of Both Worlds. I wish you'd play it right now. It'd make me so happy. <sighs> I'm working on it, buddy. You get the best <laughs> of both worlds. Oh, it's not in this system. All right. Uh, you, uh, you're, uh, uh, well, uh, if you are getting a little side action on the regular, I guess you could just roll with it if you can live with it. 
Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's just gone on for so long, and the fact that he's just gotten more. Do you guys uh, lovey and more serious in the last few months? What do you, I, or, I, I thought I had a chance. Do you meet at a hotel? Does he come over to your place? How do you do it? Sometimes we bang at work, <laughs> and sometimes it's like in a oh, car outside this of work. Is and so bad. Sometimes dude. it's oh, yeah. at my house. But it's never at his house. Never. Not well, even when the wife's out of town. Oh. Oh, well, you're lucky. Hmm. She's not the super jealous type. Hey, I'm gonna be out. <laughs> I'm gonna be out to, to pin to pin seekers with the boys. Be home about eleven. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a situation I've got myself into. Um. Yeah. Well, the, you got to remember uh, the fantasy ends when you make it official. Then the then the, the fun stops. Right. Hmm. It's weird that a guy's. Is it more weird a guy's cheating without kids? Maybe I'm wrong. No. What do you think he, you have that his wife doesn't have? I don't. Think does it's he tell about you? That. Well, does he tell you? I mean, he <clears throat> probably tells you things. Well, I mean, I'm definitely younger than her because yep. I'm a decade younger than both of them. Yep. Um. No, he doesn't really. He just, you know. <sighs> He tells me I'm pretty and that he likes me, you know, like, I mean, I mean, he tells me, he recently started telling me he loves me. And that's kind of when he Oh, uh, dude, oh, there's still a chance. Because most guys with kids, they'd be like, she's the mother of my children. Of course I can't leave her. What are you, the devil? Right. Get over here and sit on my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's usually like a I... catch or, or something you're holding them back and it would usually be kids, but. Yeah, I hear you. In this case, it's just somebody that cooks his meals every night. So it's 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 got potential. Yeah. <laughs> it's got potential. Mm. Um, is he? Uh, I don't know. Why do people oh, no. boredom? No sex at home. Does he ever say he's not getting sex? Not really. He no. doesn't really talk about her at Cause, all cause much. It's, it's I mean, the same thing. Guys want physical fulfillment, and women need emotional fulfillment. These are the things I've heard on this show before. I think it's mostly mm, true. I'm very uncomfortable. Because <laughs> I'm saying it? I just, this whole thing is very <laughs> uncomfortable. <clears throat> it sounds like I'm asking for the emotional fulfillment, and all he needs is the physical fulfillment. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't need another wife, necessarily. They just need a big, mm. rack, a big rack with no... Uh, and then I'm like, mm. This is... It's all bad. There's no good ending to this. You know that, right? Like, if you guys end up together, you can't work together. Well, okay. I'll put it in perspective. The reason I even thought I had a chance is my brother left his wife for a girl who was 21 years younger than him. Oh, yeah. And they're, like, Johnny, married with sister? a kid now. That's, uh, this is and my sister. And everything works out great. <laughs> yeah. We only date people half our age. <laughs> yeah, it runs in the family. Jesus <laughs> like, they, they're doing great. Right. And, like, they have a kid now, and everything's, like, great. And they've been together for seven years now. Yeah. But I... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I kind of thought I had a chance. <laughs> See, there's always something that they're trying, that uh, guys are trying to fulfill. Although people go on to great success with second and third sure, marriages. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. fine. I mean, holy 100%. Toledo. 100%. Could you imagine Johnny Cash without June Carter? No, I hear you. But the it, him being the boss is the problem. Yeah, that's a bad one. Because. That's going to get you in trouble. That's going to get you fired. Well, it's going to get him fired. And, and him fired. Yeah, yeah. Him, him, not her. Because yeah. he's the right. one in power. The management always gets the the kick. Right. Right. So if he does leave his wife for you, one of you's got to be out of the job. And if it, if it gets to the higher ups, he's done. You can't, in management, you can't be sleeping with the people underneath you. That's bad juju, especially if it's a dude and a chick. That's a bad look. It's just it's just the way it is. Hmm. He's an yeah, idiot. He's a huge either. effing idiot. If you go to HR, oh, my God, have you got a lawsuit on your hands, girl? Goddamn. And I'd be careful telling that wife, too, because if she's nuts, 
That's going to be your car with the slash tires. Ooh. You, oh, yeah, that's you've got fun. a whole handful of problems here, sister. Jesus Christ. I hope that hmm. low swing and D was worth it. <laughs> you got to bail on this. You got to. Mm, this is bad. Emotionally invested. Did you not have a friend that was like, girl, what are you doing? That's how she got her raise. <laughs> and so it almost sounds like you guys are telling me the opposite of what I want. <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> There's plenty of dudes out there. Start a new life in a new country with a new job. <laughs> well, or get him fired and you get a, yeah, I don't know. Uh... Uh, yeah, I'm too low in the company to get his job. That's not happening. Yeah. That wow. that would be a good move, but no. <laughs> but it's so, so hard because I'm so invested in him and I really oh. uh I really want this to turn around and I yeah. don't know how. Yeah. Um <sighs> so much work. So much hassle. Um has he uh, uh, has he hinted that he might? I mean, if he doesn't like his, if if they're talking about divorce, though, that's that's kind of different. Even though you are you are going to yeah, have the, if they are, I mean, I mean, you are going to have the work situation, which you, which could kill your career. But if it's worth it, whatever, change well, jobs. He's he's been saying for a few months that he was going to leave his wife. Well, maybe he will. Have they been talking he's about divorce? Not made any moves. He well, that's the thing is, he tells me that, but they. Don't right. seem to have discussed it. Oh. Um, when she drops my work, she seems happy and has no weird awkwardness or anything. So I don't think they've talked about it. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Is like, I don't think he's going to do it. It's been almost six months he's been hinting and then talking slightly more seriously about it. But he's not doing anything. And that's where I'm like, oh, come on, dude. No. Mm-hmm. You know, get off the pot, like, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, what a frustrating situation, guys. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, well, let's take some calls. Let's see if we've got some experienced cheaters out here. Hello. Uh, just on the sex fix, what, what's to say that he wouldn't do that to her? Well, Right. You know, it, he has a track history with her now, but if he did leave his wife and marry her. Yeah. So if you're lying to your wife, why wouldn't you lie to your affair lady? Well, yeah. And if you marry your affair lady, what's not to say he's going to cheat on her? Yeah. Just saying. Have a good day. Say that. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Most guys, uh, unless things are tragic at home, don't want a new wife. They just They just want to fill the hole. So to speak. Well, and it's or it's like it's a yeah younger a better conquest s- thing. Yes, better sex. Yeah, trophy. Like, look what I did. He's trophy hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sorry. So you, she basically it'd be better if she found out he was cheating. That would help you. Then maybe. Hmm. Okay. Hi. Uh. <laughs> yeah. ra- wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah, I'd like to make a request. Uh, Marcy's Playground, Sex and Candy. <laughs> That's it. Dude, cue that one up. Hi, how's it going? Good. So all I got to say is she is the side chick. Yeah. So it's a prize. Yeah, it's your yeah. it's your ego. It's your self-worth. It's, 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 so it's... she just needs to leave because it's always, she's always just going to be the prize. Yeah. Sorry, Donna. I bet I bet most guys uh, who do cheat are still pretty happy at home, right? And that's what's so hurtful about yeah, it yeah, yeah. when they do it. It's the it's the why by the cow because right. the women that are getting cheated on are like, what did I do wrong? And it's always like nothing. You didn't do anything <laughs> wrong. You know, like it's it sucks. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, the work thing is your problem. That's your if you're willing to lose that over him, that probably helps. Hmm. But yeah. uh, unless you it's just like burn the... it, unless you know a lot of sometimes sometimes we're just burning it all down. 
and just go yeah, for it. Yeah, I mean, you, you could make a mess, dude. <laughs> you could and really make a mess. You know, you got to have a, sometimes a fire sale is the, your only option, you know? For sure. So. I've had some bad days where that crossed my mind a few times. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to drop the bomb first. Then you're all set. Right. Okay. I've definitely thought about slipping a note to the wife or sending a text yeah. or an email. Right, and right. I've thought about, you know, setting right. it all on fire. Yeah. But Call the bluff, man. Better. Call the bluff. <laughs> see, see, see where it goes. But if it, if it backfires, it's going to make your life hell. That's for damn sure. Because he can take it out on you at work. He stays with her. And that's why I haven't done He it. stays with her. It's your life. Well, I mean, you've got the trump card here. You can get him fired. Oh, for sure. No no toxicity at, at that workplace. I mean, but then you got to, there's going to, there might be repercussions for you too. I don't know. But yeah, you can absolutely get him fired. Yeah, that's not top of my list yet. I don't want to make him mad. I want him to love me. But oh my God, you're, not, case you're scenario, not hearing a word we're saying. You are not hearing a word we are saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm drunk with love. All like, right. What do you look, do? Look, oh my just, god! Just hike the skirt up another inch and see where it goes. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, the the boss. Ooh, yeah. I right, give it another couple of months. See what happens. <laughs> maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll throw the towel in. Okay. But let him do all it right. for now. For now, let him do it. That's all I'd. Let let let, yeah. let let him take care of that end. Don't go don't go boil a bunny. <laughs> All right, we'll be reading about now you on the have to see that movie. We'll, we'll be reading about <laughs> you on the news right after the hawk tour girl. Yeah. Ooh. All right. <laughs> All right. right. All right, Donna. I wish you the best. All right. All right Thanks, dear. guys. I really appreciate you. All right. Go to work. Have, <laughs> make a little love. <laughs> Get down tonight. Talk to you later. Dumbing down your smartphone. One podcast at a time. Listen, rate, and subscribe to the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. There is a vape pen that's being sold by a company called Swipe that's also a smartphone. Really? Yeah. I remember I had a. I thought it was hot stuff. I had a pen with a digital little clock in it. Yeah. Do you remember those? Oh, yeah. Holy cow. I'm trying to remember what year. Was I in school? <laughs> Weird. I thought I was James Bond or something. Yeah. I was going to blow up the library. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a rectangular thing with a screen on the side so you can check your social media and send text messages while you vape. That's cool. Is it? It pairs with yeah. your phone so you don't need a separate phone plan. Uh, they're disposable. Classics the devil. Uh, each one costs around 20 bucks, and so you just throw it away when it runs out of juice. It's got a couple of video games pre-installed, a weather app, and a fitness tracker. What? Oh, my God. It's so weird. The only thing it can't do is make phone calls, but Gen Zers don't do that anyway. How so big? who cares? What's the script? I got to find it. What's a pen look like? It's like it's a vape. So it's just like a phone with a vape here apparatus. Okay, sure, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's a vape. Uh, okay. I mean, well, whatever. I know we still vaping. Are we into that? I guess. Yeah. I watched that Netflix documentary on Jewel. Man, you guys should watch. <laughs> oh, it. that's pretty crazy. Did I watch that? It's pretty wack. So you can smoke your smartphone. <sighs> or yeah. Smartphone, your vape, whatever way you want to look at Interesting. it. Interesting. Is this it? The two ninety nine? <clears throat> Sixteen hours of battery life. One powers the vape. One powers the phone. It's the swipe. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm looking at. Well, there's another one out there called the. Uh, it's only twenty bucks. Yeah, that one looks a lot better than the one I'm looking at. But pretty cool, man. Is I, it? I don't know. I don't know. I have a banana over here with a phone. I just a little. <laughs> cup i put the banana and i can eat it while i'm googling oh my god porn <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening i don't understand the world to, anymore uh, i mean it's not the worst <clears throat> looking thing I don't, I don't 
I, I don't vape, so I, I can't help yeah, you there. I don't. I, I, I guess if you can conserve space. In your pockets, uh, I don't know if that's a thing. Here's my old, here's my old uh, pen watch, the clock in it. Yeah, it was this bad boy right here. Oh, this is a nice go. I remember that. Remember that? Hell yeah! Uh, the deluxe jumbo readout gold watch pen TP five hundred. Hell yeah! Uh, you see how much <laughs> they selling this bad boy for? This is what I need. God, those were so cool. Oh, you can get a five pack. Well. Because who has time to look at your watch when you're writing? <laughs> As a kid, that was fascinating. I, know, I, I mean, yeah, it was fascinating. I, we, I remember when I had a calculator watch. I got one for Christmas. I, I crap my little pants. That's right, dude. My little boy pants. I never got a calculator watch. I wanted one so bad. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. It's all right. They weren't by. Well, I mean, uh, back then they were probably expensive. I mean, they probably hadn't come down. They when they were new. It's fine. Uh, as one of the pores. The digital clock pen. <clears throat> Popular in the mid-80s. Yep, that's the exact one I had. I See, now if you didn't know about it, you got to have one. You got to have a pen with a wa- with a clock in it. Why <laughs> Why did that die? What What? What? What went wrong? <laughs> you think the little TikTok bitches would be all over that. <laughs> oh, my God. I know what time it is at all times. Well, they don't even use pens. Right. We don't do cursive. <laughs> We don't write anymore. But we don't that know was, how to make phone calls. Dude, that was so sophisticated looking. I mean, look at that. That's cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're writing. You're like, crap, I'm late for something. <laughs> Panic. Panic. I have that meeting with my sister. We're going to play kickball. I got to go. <laughs> crap. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty pretty bad. I, I don't know. I mean, you had the technology. We did it. We it died. I, whatever. I'm sure, it'll be back. Just those things that you wanted so bad. At yeah, like school shopping. Right. You're like, oh, I need that pen with a clock in it. Is that a Sterling? A st- Sterling? They were. Those came out in 1977. Wow. The 70s what, were wild. 70s were. The Liddy Committee, dude. Yeah, dude. Whoa. There's no stopping us. I wonder if I wonder if the original let me let me check something here. So serial we're, killers and We're always Googling here. One of us is always always, always Googling. Seriously. Okay, we're here. just so busy on this morning. This would show. fall under eBay electronics. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking notes. His birthday is in November. Uh, here's a uh, pen clock for sixteen dollars. Your best offer. How's oh that? my god, best offer. Put down seventy five cents. What's that look for? There's two for twelve. Vintage. Uh, Does the clock still work? I don't know. My god. Uh, I kind of. I think I remember putting the battery in one. Isn't that wild? God, and I just remember, like. Like those feelings were like so big when you were a kid and you were school shopping and like that yeah. desire to have those things was just so huge yeah. and like all consuming. And now it's like you look back and you're like, God, that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh... Uh... Yeah, you know, a kid. Time stands still. It's just, why do I need this? What, what am I doing with this pen? <laughs> I wonder if it was a grandpa hand me down. Maybe my grandpa had it. My granddad used to be, uh, uh, what would his title have been? Uh, he used to work for Chrysler. He traveled all over the country. Yeah. He was like a, um, uh, uh, oh my God, what's the title? What am I thinking of, Paul? When, when you walk, you, you go around making sure everything's uh, technically correct. What is that? Uh, what am I thinking? Quality control. Quality control. And he would go to all these Chrysler plants, and he was the man. He was like an uppity up dude at Chrysler. Yeah, it was so cool. He was on private. He had a clipboard. He was on private jets and stuff. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah, with his pocket protector and a clipboard. His, yeah, with his clock pen. <laughs> yeah, with his clock pen. How fun! <laughs> Isn't that badass? That is badass. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Okay, it skipped. I think it's it's currently skipping a generation. 
I'm like, mm. I have a clock pen. I'll take a look at it. I'll take a look at that blender, Mom, and make sure everything's working okay. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, what? yeah, that's a great question. Science cannot figure out what happened in one generation. Uh, I mean, it shouldn't be skipping me yet, should it? Newer, gayer, dumber. That's J.J. O'News. I didn't apply myself. Do you remember the clock pen? It had a little clock in it. A little digital readout. A little digital yeah. readout. Was that the schnit, dude, or what? Well, now there's LEDs. You can have a flashlight in the tip of it, too. Yeah. yeah at the same time. It's Hell very exciting. Yeah. <clears throat> Freaking chick saw that, and she's like, he's about to write an essay that's going to blow my mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but the light's on the other end of the pen. <laughs> so you can't see what you're writing. <laughs> oh. I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> Replay today, the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. Oh boy. What's happening? He's playing Margaritaville. Do you mind your business, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, you're right. My bad. <laughs> so here he is, Marty from uh, the Lonely Ones out walking his iguana in, uh, somewhere in a, someplace in Florida. We're not, that code? We'll, we'll never know. We never will get to stay there. Casa, Casa de Marty somewhere in Florida. I get to stay there when I go down to visit. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Anytime you want. Do it. Well, they're on the boat, right? Yep, yeah, they're okay. on the boat. That makes sense. Uh huh. We're going to cool. suntan lotion each other up. It's going to be amazing. Are you looking forward to your cruise, your little rock and roll I, cruise. I am. Never done a cruise before. Super excited oh, about that's it. That's cool. I'm so happy for yeah, you. Yeah, we're all first timers. Oh, I hope you love it. I hope you don't get sick and or somebody falls off the damn Thanks. boat. Thanks. I've been on many, many things, bouncing down the highway with many substances in my system and never sign <laughs> up. I think I'll be all right. Little food poisoning won't, won't make a dent. I think we'll nope. be fine. That's cool. There's got to be a gummy that cures that. Um, well, thanks for being on, dude, uh, mostly because uh, we have new music, which is cool. Right on. We do have new music. New single came out today called The Bottom. Oh, yeah. What's uh, what's the... This about being a power bottom? Exactly. <laughs> That's what I would be if I was a bottom. <laughs> um, no, it's about uh, alcoholism and how it ruins relationships. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. I wonder if they mentioned my name oh, in the song. Do you think they mentioned our it's names? Called, it's, yeah, it's called The Bottom, a.k.a. Johnny. <laughs> I swear to God. Home. I went through that white Russian phase. I swear to God, I lost, like, all my friends. I almost lost my job. <laughs> there were there was a week I showed up at the wrong radio company. I was over at the other one playing yeah, country. Trust me, we enjoyed it. <laughs> playing country music for a week. Nobody even noticed. Very bizarre. Uh, who's bottom? Your bottom? Your friend's bottoms? Everybody's got the bottom i guess uh, well uh, you know i it's the music industry so i've known a lot of people right. myself included that uh have drank too much alcohol and ruined some relationships mm -hmm. and, and had some relationships teeter on the edge and uh, you know how it works <laughs> exactly what i'm talking about mm. well we we all have a we all have a mission, a plan, and, and uh, something somewhere gets you somewhere else, and here we are. So we, we learn as we go, Marty. We, we learn as yeah. we go. There's no manual, well, like when, there's no manual for this a, stuff. When you're in a band and stuff, it's like, and I'm not complaining. I've had time in my life, but when you're in a band, you, you play every single night, and, mm -hmm. and, and the fans, that's the one night they get to go out and yeah. party, and, and they take time off work, and they're like, what, you know? here's a drink, here's a drink, party with me, and they just cram all that in. They don't realize that you do that every single night. And if you cater to the fans and do that every single night, you turn around two years later and you got an alcohol problem. Yeah, right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And, and, uh, and if you're, you know, if, you, if you've got relationships with your fans, yeah, you don't want to let them down. I, hey, I've seen, no. I've seen you guys. I know how you are with fans, man. The love. And then you know, the, your person at home that speaks to you on the phone every night mm -hmm. can't understand a word you're saying. Yeah. It's like then you let them down, and it's just a downward spiral down to the bottom. One hundred percent. What was your you know, tied the song back in? He's like that. Well, what was your? Uh, well done, Martin. Uh, you you know him well enough to call him Martin. Damn it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what was your? We talk uh, outside the radio interviews. What was your breaking point, I guess? I mean, when did you just say, okay, this is nuts? Uh, 
um, gosh, man, I had so many breaking points where I said, this is nuts. And then by nine o'clock at night, I was like, oh, let me have one more. Let's, you know, getting ready to go on stage. Let's have another one. Um, my girlfriend was like, this is during the pandemic and stuff when everything no. went haywire. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to play music anymore. Um, when, you know, the things were coming up on the screen, if you smoke or drink or this or that, and you're unhealthy, you're probably going to die from this coronavirus. I thought, oh, that's me. They're talking to me. <laughs> um, so during the pandemic, I got like, like I had this weird thing happen to me where I got real dizzy for like two years. Like I couldn't, like my ears were popping, my heart was pounding out of my chest. My girlfriend thinks it was panic attacks, which probably was. Um, and the only thing that would help was alcohol. Um, so I, during the pandemic, I, I got real dark. I started drinking you know, I never drank by myself. I never drank before it was nighttime. I never did anything. I had all these little, little levels of things. Well, I'm a better alcoholic than this person because I don't do this and right. I don't do that. Right. Um, and then during the pandemic, I would just get hammered all day. And because and I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. If, I'm not making excuses, um, but I was weak and thought, you know, my life's over. This whole music thing's over. We, we weren't able to play for two years. Um, so you get to kind of down in the dumps and this depression thing. And then start drinking a little bit, put your headphones in, start listening to music, like, oh, yeah, things are going to be all right. And then that just kind of takes off into this ugly place where you're driving by restaurants and seeing signs of you know, Budweiser signs. I wonder what it's like to be drunk in there. I wonder what it's like. <laughs> you start, you just, it's a progressive thing. That it just gets worse and worse. And, and then there's just one point in time where, uh, my lady said, okay, that's enough. You've had your, you've had your, uh, wallow and, and sadness. Uh, it's time to put on your big boy pants and, and right. make a move. And, you know, if you can't play music anymore, cause we didn't know, you know, we thought, I thought maybe it was the end of the world. I didn't know. Um, right. She's like, yep, you got to deal with it. So I went to the doctor and got this shot that, that, uh, you could still drink on and, and, but it took all the cravings away and just kind of, just kind of didn't care. And, and I kept doing that for about a year. And I had some, you know, some slip ups here and there. Um, but I was lucky enough to have a very understanding, loving woman that was, I was like, okay, back in, back on the wagon. So, yeah, one of those kind of things. Um, just lucky, really lucky. And then the lonely one started taking off, and I started feeling like I uh, had a purpose again, slowly. Um, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. Yeah, did that start cutting? I mean, did you re start relying on that for your creative process, or did or did you or did that at some point you know, like wow, um, things are too dull right now. I can't even I can't even get the the creativity moving again. Um, I think so. To me, I, I go in different modes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in a touring mode. If we're on tour, it's all about tour. It's all about tour. If I'm home, um, it's all about you know, making dinner, make sure the house is clean, make sure, you know, there's flowers on the table and romance and all that stuff. Whoa. And then when it's writing time, it's writing time. Ah. So, so, you know what I mean? When it's time to write, it's like, it takes me like maybe a day or so. I'm like, ah, I can't think of anything. And all of a sudden floodgates open up. Yeah. And I'm writing well, 24 seven, you know, yeah. waking up in the middle of the night, singing into my phone. And well, that would be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess m my point also was, did it slow down the, the amount of creativity, the amount of music. I mean, was it just becoming hit and miss as to where it used Alcohol? to be? Well, no, the writing part to where it used to come a little more naturally. Is, is, did the, no, out, did a, the output stop? No, no, huh, not at all. All right. Um, when, when you get into tougher times, you actually, I actually write better songs. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. And write more and, and look toward the things that make me happy. And, and um, I just, you know, being a musician, that's just the thing that I do. Um, and when you take that away, it gets really, really sad and really dark. Mm -hmm. um, but I always, when those times are happening, for some reason, the lyrics are always better. Um, Marty, we had Tuck Smith in here. Uh, was it last week yeah. or the week before? Yeah. And he was uh, talking about how he recorded some stuff with you guys. Uh, is this one yeah. of the songs that he did with you guys or no? No. No. Okay. The, so. One song he did with us was called uh, Don't Cry For Me, which is our first writing session together. Okay. This dude, I love that dude. He He's so cool. Nashville. Yeah, he drove in in a van six hours up to Nashville, drove over top of a parking pylon, jumped out of the car, and we started writing. And we wrote, I mean, with his acoustic guitar. He's like, hey, why blah, blah, blah. I'm just this wild, wiry dude that, that it fits perfect with us. And so we started writing, and that was the first song we wrote was Don't Cry For Me. The next song... Um, which we, you know, we're kind of 
getting a budget and stuff ready. Um, that's going to come out that he wrote with us. It's called Shooting Up the Dance Floor. And it's about a girl that's so hot when she dances, people panic as if someone is shooting in the club. Um, <laughs> and it, we think it's going to be a game changer. Uh, it was something that we ha- already had. And he came in and was like, oh, that, that part's great. That part's great. Let's move these things. And really did a really good job being a producer. And, and we trusted him. And, and it was just a magical kind of thing. Like next time we get in and, and like I said, budgets and things, um, uh, you know, budgetary restraints sometimes and sometimes it's doing well um next time we get the the right setting um can't wait to write with that guy again he's an awesome artist and an awesome dude and cannot wait to be in a room with him again and just lock the doors and see what happens heck yeah cool all right all right man well it's great to hear your voice i know you're uh what are you guys doing uh, uh you playing out in august what, what are you guys just kind of chilling for right now uh, we're off for two weeks and then right back out. So we yeah. just got off the road. Um, I got, got in yesterday. So, um, just got off the road straight back to work and then right back out on the road in, in August. And I, we'll be in your area with the black moon. Right, right. I can't wait. I saw you guys were playing out at Oscar blues, which is one of our favorite places in the yeah. world. Out in uh, Lions, Colorado. Uh, right on. Ha- have you ever played there before? No. Okay. I say you're there for two days. It's awesome. It's right up against the mountainside there in Lyons. It's like the back door up to Estes Park. It's a great spot. You're going to love it. I'm jelly. I'm jelly, Marty. Oh, you get, yeah, make planes, trains, and automobiles. My I know, my man. Man, that should, be a, that should be a song title. Write that down. Right, yeah. Hey, I want you to name your next star. If you ever do a record again, call it Hurricane Marty. Because, you know, you guys get hurricanes and stuff. <laughs> Okay. All right, dude. I'm going to play your song. I thought it was funny. You got to go, you got to go back to work. He's you're an gonna, ideas man. You're going to no, get This is my favorite interview I've ever done because I'm on the clock. I'm getting paid to talk to yeah. JJ. It's outrageous. Listen, <laughs> introduce your song. Go back to work. You got a car payment. Okay. So. so this song is called The Bottom is our latest single. It's about alcoholism and how alcoholism affects relationships. And please, 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 if you like it, go download it, stream it so I don't have to clock in at this place ever again. Oh, boy. Hey, we love you. Love you, too. Thank you guys so much. Talk to you soon, brother. Thanks. One, two, three. You keep on lying. Said you wasn't drinking. Showed up stumbling, weeping. Hiding from your demons. You paint a picture. Torture broken victim. Expect me to stay with you. Because I can't stand that feeling.
The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. Nowhere but JJO.